Hi, this is David from Critical Trading. In this video, I'm going to describe what I believe to be one of the most underrated types of trading strategies, momentum trading strategy. I will share one of my recent trades I made using my fully automated algo momentum strategy that generated 70% return on a single trade in Tesla stock. Then I will explain everything you need to know about momentum trading strategies, how do they trade and how to start trading them yourself. For the purposes of this video, I came up with a simple momentum strategy on which I'll explain the entire concept and also share its equity curve at the end of the video. Great thing about the strategy I will present during the video is the fact that it's very low maintenance. It only requires an hour or so per month and the calculations needed to trade it successfully can be done even in a spreadsheet. So what is a momentum trading strategy? Momentum trading strategies aim to open a trade in the markets with a strong momentum, hence the name momentum trading. In this particular case, we can see that the price of Tesla stock has been steadily rising, indicated by yellow line, because Tesla stock has got strong momentum. A typical momentum trading strategy would aim to buy the stock at this point, speculating that the price will continue rising like it did later, indicated by purple line. Momentum trading strategies aim to exploit one of the most time-proven forces in the markets, which is momentum. They buy after a prolonged run-up and speculate that the run-up will continue. Their logic can therefore be summed up as buy high and aim to sell even higher. This differs to mean reversion strategies, where a typical mean reversion strategy aims to buy low and sell higher. I've got a great video where I explain all you need to know about mean reversion strategies as well, link in the description. Now let's look at an actual example, an actual trade made by one of my algo strategies in my portfolio, a systematic momentum strategy that bought Tesla stock here. Now, where a typical mean reversion strategy would be looking to sell this stock, as it would consider it overbought or overvalued, my momentum strategy has produced a buy signal, speculating that the price will continue to rise due to underlying strong momentum in this stock. This assumption turned out to be correct. Tesla continued to rise and the strategy closed its position here. Let's also have a look at my trading activity report to see the actual figures. The entry price of 414, exit price of 705, generating a profit of 70%. And all this with a simple measure of stocks momentum without any traditional indicators and without using any leverage. This trade was done using cash only. So how do you actually trade momentum in the markets? How do you construct a momentum strategy that would make trades similar to the one I just showed you? For the purposes of this video, I came up with a simple framework that you can take away and start experimenting with. Let's start with a simple momentum strategy that only trades once a month and uses stocks annual return to measure its momentum. Obviously, the higher the stocks annual return is, the higher the momentum is deemed to be. The strategy will hold a maximum of 15 stocks at any given time, where it holds 15 stocks with the highest momentum. I will explain this momentum ranking process in more detail shortly. The strategy doesn't use any indicators to time the market, but instead simply holds the highest momentum stocks. On top of this, trades are open only if the particular stock is above its 200-day moving average. This is to avoid opening new positions during prolonged bear markets, such as 2008, for instance. The vertical green lines on the chart represent the beginning of the month, which is when this model momentum strategy ranks the stocks and opens or closes its trades. The strategy doesn't do anything in between these vertical lines. These are the only times when this strategy actually does something. It doesn't make any new trades outside of this window in between the vertical lines, and it doesn't make any changes to its existing positions. This kind of slow momentum trading is therefore, in my opinion, a great strategy for beginners to start with as it's really low maintenance and it doesn't give rise to the spikes of adrenaline like Forex day trading does, for example. The annual rate of change used in this model strategy is plotted in form of a turquoise line below the price chart. The rate of change is based on last 252 trading days and we can see that at the beginning of this chart it was around 21% where by the end of 2020 it rose to 700%. Now to continue with our simple momentum framework let's look at a key element of any momentum strategy which is its ranking system. 
As I said in the beginning of this video, momentum strategies generally do not use any indicators to open and close their positions. Instead, they hold a number of different stocks at any given time, and they simply rotate these stocks based on whether they show strong momentum or not. This kind of approach is commonly called a rotational momentum strategy. Once a month, this strategy takes all stocks that it's applied on, let's say all stocks that belong to Nasdaq 100 or S&P 100 index. It then ranks all these stocks based on a certain formula, like their annual return, for instance. This is to measure stocks momentum, where obviously the higher the stocks annual return, higher the deemed momentum. Stocks with higher annual return end up ranking higher in the list. So if we look at the top annual return stocks um, in the first month, we can see that a stock A is ranking the highest, so it's got rank number one, then stock B and then stock C. To make this slide easier to understand, um, I used maximum of three stocks at a time, hence only three stocks are shown here. All these three highest annual return stocks are bought at the beginning of month number one. Again, no indicators are used to time the market, just the stock's momentum measured by its annual return. Then we get to month number two, when the process is repeated. Again, all stocks that this strategy is applied on are ranked by their annual return. The higher the annual return, the higher the rank of the stock is. First, strategy checks whether the stocks that it currently holds, which were bought last month, i.e. stock A, B and C, still appear in the top three list. We can see that stocks A and B still appear on this list, but stock C doesn't. This is because stock C's momentum has decreased. Its annual return is now lower than what it was before, and so the stock lost its place within the top three, indicated by this red line. Stock D now appears in the first place, and so the momentum strategy sells stock C and buys stock D at the beginning of month number two. And again, at the beginning of month number three, process is repeated again. We can see that both stocks B and D have disappeared from the top three list, as their prices must have fallen, which would have resulted in their annual return falling down. Stocks B and D are therefore sold and replaced with stocks E and F that now appear in ranks number one and two. Additionally, stocks A that had the highest annual return last month now fell to rank number three. However, it still appears in the top three and so the strategy keeps holding it. What I just described was a simplified ranking mechanism of a rotational momentum strategy, a strategy that holds a predefined number of stocks and rotates them periodically based on a certain ranking formula. When it comes to the actual ranking formula itself, it can vary in complexity. For the purposes of this video, I chose a simple annual return ranking where the higher the annual return is, the higher the rank of the stock is. The logic of such ranking is that if the stock rose significantly during the past year, its momentum is obviously strong, and that means that the momentum is likely to continue to be present, resulting in even further rise in stock's price. What we see on this screen is a profit distribution chart that's typical for momentum strategy. We can see that the red part that represents losing trades is visually bigger than the green one. This means that the typical momentum strategy normally has more losing trades than profitable trades. However, we can also see that this comes hand in hand with the fact that losing trades are smaller. The biggest losing trade on this example here is around uh, minus 10%, whereas some of the biggest profitable trades go to 20 or even 30% profit mark. This kind of distribution is said to have a positive skew. The profit distribution of a typical momentum strategy is skewed to positive area, meaning that the win rate will generally be around 50% or less, resulting in small losses with occasional big profits. As such, momentum strategies will generally have low trade frequency, especially when compared to mean reversion strategies, for example. This is because momentum strategies keep holding onto their profitable trades for much, much longer. The strategy that made the trade in Tesla that I showed you in the beginning of this video has an average hold time of a couple of months, for instance. Logically, momentum strategies profit during sustained long-term trends and lose mostly in sideways markets, but also in high volatility environments where the markets fall sharply and quickly, like they did at the beginning of 2020. And finally, an equity curve of a model momentum trading strategy that uses stock annual return to measure momentum. Strategy holds a maximum of 15 stocks at any given time. 
it trades stocks that belong to S&P 100 index and it trades on a rotational basis as explained during the video. It ranks the stocks once a month at the beginning of the month where these are ranked by their annual return as a measure of momentum. There are some further risk management rules involved as well but I'll leave that for some future videos. The great thing about a strategy like this is that it's a very very low maintenance because it trades once a month. There's a lot of time for preparation. Once you have the stock data available, which by the way you can get for free from various sources in the internet, all you need to do is to scan the stocks, measure the rate of change and rank them. Over here for example I've got my software that I use for developing my strategies called AmiBroker. All I need to do to trade the strategy successfully is to run a scanner which does all the work. I can see stock tickers and their annual rate of change. Based on this I simply select 15 stocks starting from the top of the list and open new positions. You can even do all these calculations in Excel to start with and all this generated an average return of about 20% a year trading once a month. This concludes today's video. Hope that you got a lot of inspiration to start out with momentum trading strategies. This is David at Critical Trading signing out.